So hello everybody, how are you today? It is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every single Friday. Okay, with that said, into this video we're going to talk about remove filters, which is a new function that was introduced in the Power BI Desktop Update September 2019. So, um, remove filters, what is it? Remove filters functionality exists already in another function, which is all, okay? So why do we need remove filters? Well, there are two things. Number one is just the name. It's easier to understand what the function is. I love when the functions are called what they do. It, I, I think it's fantastic. And this is one of those examples. So remove filters removes filters. Number two, remove filters does not create a table in the background that tends to the function that is feeding, nothing like that. It just removes a filter. That's it. And it says it here, remove filters can only be used to clear filters, but not to return a table because when you just remove filters, it returns nothing. It just removes stuff. Very important. How do you, how do you work the syntax? You can put an empty, we will look at it, a table, one column, two columns, the works. And, uh, we're going to do an example so you actually get a little bit more into the meat of the function and you actually see how it works. I think it's a very, very good function. Okay, so here we are on the North Win data set. You will have this file available for download at kerbal.com, resources, and then download center, and then DAX Fridays. Okay, so you can go and grab it. We're using the North Win data set. And we have, we're going to use two tables, the product table, which is a list of the products that are available on that company and the number of sales. So sales, it is like that, SumX, which is there is a column for unit and another for quantity. So we're multiplying both. And this gives us the sales. I have now, let's put product name first. So we have the number of sales per product. And uh, this is what we want to do. We want to know the percentage that each product contributes to the total. In other words, we have here that, I don't know how to pronounce that, the Camembert. This is a French cheese. So that product sold for $50,000. This is an American database. We have sold for 1.3. So how much is that in percentage? 50% out of 1.3 million. We're going to calculate that. To calculate that, what you normally would do, you have the sales and then you need to divide that by the total. And to do that, you need to have the total on each row because you're doing the calculation row by row. So we go here, new measure, and sales all, all. Let's write all because I'm going to change this quite heavily. Okay, so calculate sales. And now what you would do before is you would use all. And then if you want to remove product name, you would put product name. So this says calculate the sales, ignore the product name. So remove the filter that the column product name is giving us. So let me go back a little. So if I remove the product name, you'll see that the sales is 1.3. If I put product name in there, the column product name is acting as a filter and is giving us a new value of sales per product. What we're ultimately saying here is remove this product filter. We don't want it because we want to have, you'll see it here, this total sales per each row. Okay. And the reason we want to have that is because we want to calculate the percentage. So if we want to calculate the percentage now, you will go in here, you will go divide, and then you will do sales by. So it's basically dividing these by these, and then we're going to put it in percentage, and then we have it. So this is, it was 4% of the sales. Okay. Now, you know that. So this is how you would do it before. This is how I recommend you to do it now. Uh, let's go back here. Where did my... 
they will go, Jesus, you have to be careful because sometimes when you are in and out of the, um, of the editor, you might delete things by mistake. So when you think you're deleting here, you're actually deleting there. You see that it happened to me and I don't think you can take it back. No. So just be careful, okay? I need to recreate that table, unfortunately. It's just so painful. Ah, uh, text. The Microsoft team, uh, the Parbay team knows that. I've already told them. So hopefully we'll get a fix at some point. So now, sales all. Let's go back to number. And uh, as you remember, we were using all before. We are using now with this new function remove filters and it's going to give us you know what the exact same thing yeah why are we using them again remove filters it's just so clear what it says it says calculate sales remove the filter by you know created by the product name column it just says that remove filter. So it is very useful. And it's also not creating anything in the background that needs to be put in memory, blah, 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 blah. No, it just removes the filter. So it's like, really, 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 really love this thing. Now, you can put one column, you can remove more. Here you will have two columns. So if I would put product category ID, I don't have it there. It will still give us the same thing because it's ignoring that filter too, which is great. You can put ignore an entire, oh, the editor is just killing me. Ignore an entire table. So whatever I put in here is going to ignore anything that I put from the product table gone. And then you can just say, ignore everything in the entire model. So this thing basically gives us the exact same number, no matter where you put it, which is unheard of in DAX, right? <laughs> everything changes all the time. Well, not if you write it like this. Put anything you want and it will give you the same number. Useful in some cases. Now I want to go back just for a second because I was stumped by this. If you go here, you put product. You say calculate sales by product. And so that means that it's going to ignore the product table. So nothing in the product table will be used as a filter. And then I put, I went into categories and I had category name because I was testing other things put it in there, remove that. And it didn't say ignore category filter. I just said ignore product table. And it's still ignoring my category name. As you can see, if I put sales here, it will give me sales by category. But when I have remove filters product, it's ignoring my category table. And I was like, what was going on? Look at this. So to be able to get to categories, it has to go through product. And because it's ignoring products, I'm guessing that it's not able to pass the filter through categories because products does not exist. So be careful with that. At least that, that is what I think is doing. <laughs> Let me know if that's not correct. But that, that was my conclusion as to why this wouldn't work. It should work otherwise. Um, because if I put, let's give it a go, customers. You see, it works. But when I put products, it doesn't. Anyhow, I just wanted you to be aware of that in case it happens or just you keep it in memory while you're doing your DAX so you know that it won't be able to access tables, child tables to a table when you are removing that. You know what I mean, right? Okay, okay, good. This is all for today. I hope you have a great Friday. Enjoy your weekend and I will see you again on Monday as always. So until then, take care and bye bye.